Before I start this video, I like to give a huge shout out to Motividia. Your boy was going through some hard times with a channel demonetization back in late January, and Motive stuck with me and supported me to the very end to resolve this. Much love and congrats on breaking 300k subscribers by the end of this month. All right, let's get started. When boxers lose their O, part two. Starting the list is boxing great Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins actually lost his first pro bout to Clinton Mitchell by majority decision. Due to his age, when he picked up boxing, and that one blemish on his record, many slept on Hopkins as a world-class fighter. He used the negativity as a positive and paved a path to a Hall of Fame career and made many smart boxing fans rich betting on his fights where he was somehow the underdog in. Oh boy, Conor McGregor. His first pro bout as a boxer fights Floyd Mayweather and is absolutely taken to school. If you have Mayweather stalking you down, like Pretty Boy Floyd from the 90s and early 2000s, that's already a problem for you. Now McGregor claimed he had a good amateur boxing background. Looking at the fight, it's hard to believe that when he's trying to hammer fist his opponent. These claims hold as much weight as Frank Dukes' ninjutsu background. By the end of 2007, Juan Diaz was a fucking man, unifying the division against Brazilian lightweight great Asselino Freitas and Julio Diaz to top off 2007. Juan's first fight to start the 2008 year was against Nate Campbell. Campbell was a highly underrated lightweight who people didn't really even give a chance of winning. Due to very unfortunate shortcomings and a title run, it really set him back to where he was in complete ruin. That's it. What a shock! What a shock! Nate Campbell all but had that fight won with those body shots, stood up, played with his opponent. After that fight, I looked at him, you know, some guys were mad at him, some were like kind of walking away, and I, and I said, Nate, let me tell you something. I said, man, listen, whatever you do, believe in yourself. I said, because I believe in you. I said, I won't leave you. I said, I love you. I said, I will not leave you. Damn. Just... He's just special. People just thought that Diaz was just going to do what Diaz does best and outwork and outpunch Nate into submission. Nate at 36 years old and Juan Diaz at 24 years old. Not many gave him a chance. But no more so than even just winning the rails is the fact that it looked like he's on the verge of winning the fight by knockout. It appears we are watching Nate Campbell as he finally capitalizes on an opportunity for which he has waited so long. And Juan Diaz's 33 and no record is sinking into oblivion. Nate Campbell! In the 90s, Tool was being hyped up as the next Mike Tyson. In 1997, he would meet his match against heavyweight boxing's most underrated contender, 16-0 Ike Ibebuchi, and a fight of the year candidate. A total of 1,730 punches were thrown, and Ike set the Kapu Box record as the most punches thrown by a heavyweight. Ike would go on to win by a very close unanimous decision, giving Tua his first loss. An explosive left hook by Tua, and Tua again, and again. Upset City for the second consecutive week on Boxing After Dark. A giant upset strikes the heavyweight division. Paul Williams was one of the most feared fighters of the past two decades in the welterweight division. With the height of six foot one, the arm length of 79, and was a volume puncher who easily could throw 800 to 1,000 punches a fight, top fighters avoided Williams like the plague. In February 2008, Williams was set up against the six to one underdog, Carlos Quintana. Quintana was not a bad fighter at all. He was real slick, hard to punch guy that would give a certain type of fighter a lot of trouble due to his awkward style. Reasons why people slept on Carlos, besides Williams being a monster, was because his first loss against Miguel Cotto a year and a half prior to this fight, he was brutally beaten by Cotto. The corner urged him to continue the fight, 
but Carlos did not want to continue. After this fight, many people on the web questioned his heart and gave him immature nicknames such as Quitana. Coming to this fight, he really had a chip on his shoulder and wanted to prove that he does have heart and he will do whatever it took to beat the boogeyman at welterweight. And on this night, he did, beating Paul Williams by unanimous decision. What led to Williams' first loss this fight, he did a lot of overthinking and waiting around. By the time he decided to make his move, Quintana already made his and was scoring point after point, raking in rounds. Williams in the rematch will see past the smoke and mirrors and make easy work of Quintana. Two minutes, 15 seconds into the first round. Tito was the biggest name in boxing and was on top of many pound for pound lists. The man in his way to end the middleweight championship series was the 36 year old Bernard Hopkins, whom people completely slept on. Though it was an incredibly entertaining fight, especially the 10th round, that round being voted as Ring Magazine round of the year of 2001, Hopkins flat out gave Trinidad a boxing lesson. For supporters of Trinidad, it was one of the most saddest sights to see. During this generation of the heavyweight division, where fighters from all ex-Soviet countries held all the belts, and not one single American cared about what was happening in this division. Valuev silently made a rose up to an astonishing record of 46-0. The man to beat him was Ruslan Chagaev by a pencil-thin majority decision. Rocky Marciano's record was at 49-0. Most guys, once they reach 45, it gets really hard. So close, but yet so far at the same time. Especially when you're fighting the best in boxing. Tony came into the fight with Roy Jones Jr. as a favorite to win at 6-5. It was ranked number two pound for pound and the record of 44-0 against some of the most notable world-class fighters of that era. According to paper and the betting odds, Tony was supposed to win this fight. Whomever set that up was so wrong. Jones completely white rushed Tony, which was absolutely insane at the time. Forrest had a big year defeating undefeated Shane Mosley, not once, but twice. His first fight to start the new year of 2003 was a lineal title unification against the little known WBA champion Ricardo Mayorga. Forrest came into a rude awakening and caught some unsuspected heat being stopped in the third round. And that time he was seriously hurt. Yeah, look at the wobbling in Vernon Forrest. Marty Dickens stops the fight! Forrest performed better in the rematch, but still came up short in the scorecards, losing back-to-back -back against Mayorga. December of 98, Vladimir Klitschko faces pretty much the Darnell Boone of the heavyweight division at the time. The always dangerous Ross Purity. Vladimir had never fought on past the eighth round, though he had three 12 round scheduled fights only to go less than five rounds. Ross took the inexperienced Vladimir into deep waters. Once he had Vlad right where he wanted to, he took him out in the 11th round. <laughs> Fritz 
Way up in the scorecards, Vitaly encountered a torn rotator cuff, which forced him to retire from the fight. Larry Merchant, obviously not knowing the situation, stated he doesn't have the mentality of a champion. I can hardly believe exactly what I just saw. Just told us. I can't believe what I just saw. Vitalik Klitschko, he likes not to go on, but his left hand apparently is too damaged to continue, and Chris Bird gets a victory. Like how Vitaly avenged Lad's loss, Vladimir did the same for his brother, brutally beating Bird for seven rounds before being stopped. Lewis was the WBC heavyweight champion, facing the five and a half to one underdog, Oliver McCall. With the great mind of Emmanuel Stewart in the corner of McCall, they had the perfect game plan of beating Lewis, which they certainly did, knocking Lewis out in the second round. Lewis unbeaten, remember, after 25 fights. Oh, he's got him. Oh, Lewis walked into a right hand, and that was the sucker punch that they worried about. And Lewis staggers, and the referee has uh, decided it's all over. My goodness, what an upset, and Lennox Lewis's career must now be... Lewis fired his trainer immediately following the fight, and teamed up with Stewart. Lewis will go on to avenge his loss against Bacall, which he will win the fight under the most unusual circumstances. Oliver Bacall is now crying. Let's listen in. I mean, we, these people didn't pay to see an execution, you know? This something's not right. That's here. it. That it is. is it. The fight is over. Mills Lane. Kelly was seen as the best featherweight in boxing at an unprecedented record of 41 0. That would change the start of 1995 against number six ranked Alejandro Gonzalez. Kelly was getting outworked and outshined by Gonzalez. He was really trying his best to win the fight, digging deep and putting down Gonzalez in the eighth round. But unfortunately, it was not enough and Kelly's corner stopped the fight in fear of causing future damages, as Kelly was pretty much blind in both eyes due to the swelling. Look at me, look at me, let me see you look at me. Fight's over. Fight's over. No, Kevin. Fight's over. I want to go, I want to go. Fight's over. Fight's over. There it is. And that is part two, when boxers lose their O. For more installations, be sure to like, and if you're new, subscribe. I am Alfa Sancho, and I'm out.